Hi students, I'm so happy to meet you all once again and I guess such meetings will happen again and again so my happiness isn't going to cease. Hopefully you all are doing fine and are taking advantage of the sessions conducted by your college teachers. I'm Mrs. Neeta Pramod from Sri T.P. Bhartia College of Science, Department of Mathematics and today we commence with a 12th journey for the subject mathematics. Now in 12th standard the topic that we would begin with is pair of straight lines. But before actually beginning with this chapter we would be revising a chapter of your 11th standard that is straight lines to brush up on your concepts and to make your basics much more stronger. Now in this regard we will be posting MCQ questions and we would be having a discussion regarding the same. But before me actually giving you the questions and before the discussion takes place let us briefly summarize this entire chapter so that you can attempt your MCQs easily. So students charge yourselves up and let's begin with the session. So students what is a straight line? A straight line is said to be a locus of points. What is a locus now? Locus is said to be a set of points all of which satisfy a particular condition. A straight line is made up of infinite number of points. You take any two points on the straight line and calculate its slope. It always remains the same. So we come up with the definition of a straight line. If the slope of segment joining any two points in a plane is constant, then the locus of such points is a straight line. For example, 2x plus 3y equal to 6, 5x equal to 20, 4x minus 3y equal to 0, y equal to 0 are all examples of equations of a straight line. Now students if you observe these equations, you will observe that the highest power of x and y in each of these equations are 1. Therefore, the equations of a straight line is always linear in x and y. Next in line is inclination. Inclination is the smallest positive angle that the line makes with the positive direction of x axis. It is denoted by theta. Now theta could be acute or obtuse depending upon how far is the line from the x-axis. That is the range for theta is between 0 and 180 that is pi 0 inclusive. In the examples listed the inclinations are 45 degrees and 135 degrees respectively. Students please note that for x-axis or for any line parallel to the x-axis the inclination is always 0 degrees. Whereas for y-axis or for any line parallel to the y-axis the inclination is 90 degree or pi by 2. Next we come across the most important concept that of slope. We all have come across this word slope in our day to day lives. Slope in layman term basically tells us how steep a line could be. And in mathematical sense it gives change in y over change in x. A slope of a line is normally denoted by small m. There are various formulas to calculate the slope of a line. Firstly, on a line, if any two points are known, 
namely x1 y1 and x2 y2 then slope m is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 students note it is change in y over change in x secondly if the inclination of a line is known that is theta then slope m is equal to tan theta thirdly if the general equation of a line is known the general equation of a line is of the form ax plus by plus c equal to 0 slope m here is equal to minus a upon b that is minus coefficient of x upon coefficient of y here we put in two more terms that is the x intercept of a line and y intercept of a line x intercept of a line basically gives you a point where the line cuts the x axis that is to find the x intercept we would have to substitute the value of y as 0 in the equation of the line or remember the formula that is x intercept is equal to minus c upon a that is minus constant upon coefficient of x similarly the y intercept of a line gives you a point where the line cuts the y axis therefore to find the y intercept either substitute x equal to 0 in the equation of the line or remember the formula y intercept is equal to minus c upon b that is minus constant upon coefficient of y next depending upon the nature of lines we can always draw a relation between their slopes two lines can be parallel to each other or we could have two non-parallel lines now when two lines are parallel to each other we can conclude that their slopes must be equal vice versa when slopes of two lines are equal the conclusion is the lines are parallel now in case of non-parallel lines that is intersecting lines let theta be the angle between two intersecting lines now theta could be an acute angle or theta could be a 90 degree angle meaning the lines could be perpendicular to each other when theta is an acute angle tan theta is defined as modulus m1 minus m2 upon 1 plus m1 m2 this formula can be used to calculate the acute angle between two lines when the slopes are given now when the lines are perpendicular to each other we can draw in a conclusion that the product of their slopes is equal to minus 1 vice versa when the product of slopes of two line is equal to minus 1 the conclusion is the lines are perpendicular for a line perpendicular to the x-axis the slope is not defined whereas for a line which is perpendicular to the y-axis the slope is zero now let us consider the various forms of equation to begin with let us consider the x-axis now students you all know that at all points on the x-axis the y-coordinate is always zero therefore we get the equation of x axis as y equal to 0. Similarly, at all points on the y axis, the x coordinate happens to be 0. Therefore, the equation of y axis is x equal to 0. For a line which is perpendicular to the x axis, the equation is x equal to constant. It means that anywhere on this line, it is the x coordinate which is remaining constant throughout. We could write the equation as x equal to a. Similarly, 
for a line which is perpendicular to the y axis the equation is y equal to constant say y equal to b the fifth form of equation is equation of a line in slope point form as the name suggest the known quantities are slope of the line say m and a point on the line say x1 y1 the equation here is y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1 students take note whatever are the known quantities are to be substituted here you would have to substitute for m x1 and y1 and solve the equation further the sixth form of the equation is 2.4 the equation here is y minus y1 upon y1 minus y2 equal to x minus x1 upon x1 minus x2 again here the known quantities are x1 y1 and x2 y2 which are to be substituted the seventh form is equation of line in slope intercept form again the known quantities are the slope of the line say m and the y intercept of the line say c here the equation is y equal to mx plus c for a line passing through the origin the value of c should be zero therefore what is the equation of the line passing through the origin it is y equal to mx students note that this form of equation is an important equation concerning the 12th standard topic here the slope of a line passing through the origin can be defined as the y coordinate upon the x coordinate of the point through which the line is passing the eighth form is the equation of the line in double intercept form again as the name suggest the known quantities here are the two intercepts of the line that is the x intercept say a and y intercept say b its equation is x upon a plus y upon b equal to 1 the last form is the normal form here the equation is x cos alpha plus y sin alpha equal to p where p is the perpendicular distance of the line from the origin and alpha is the inclination of the normal with respect to the positive x axis okay students now we revise the perpendicular distance formula the perpendicular distance of a point p x1 y1 from the line ax plus by plus c equal to 0 is given by modulus ax1 plus by1 plus c upon root of a square plus b square students take note that you would have to shift all terms of the equation on one side and then in place of x and y substitute x1 and y1 so as to get the numerator for the denominator identify the coefficients of x and y that is a and b and accordingly substitute solve further so as to get the perpendicular distance this formula also helps us to generate the formula for perpendicular distance of the origin from the line ax plus by plus c equal to 0 you just have to substitute x1 as 0 and y1 as 0 in the above equation so as to get the perpendicular distance as c upon root of a square plus b square now two parallel lines differ in their equation only with respect 
two constants. The AX and BY part remains the same. Therefore, the distance between two parallel lines is given by C1 minus C2 upon root of A square plus B square within the modulus sign. So that ends the summarization for the chapter straight lines. Hoping that you all have followed the session. Now in case of any difficulties, any doubts, students please feel free to get back to us. Please go through the session again and again and I am sure that you will be able to solve all the MCQs easily. Students, we need to make a foundation strong and this is only possible by the continuous revision of our concepts. I am sure that you are going to do so and we always will be there with you to guide you. So, as of now, I am taking your leave till we meet the next time during the MCQ discussion. Bye, take care and stay connected.